a sweet boat. Welcome to Scrap Heap Challenge, where our two teams go head to head in a battle to build the quickest craft from the best scrap our heap has to offer. This week, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Donald Campbell's world water speed record, our Scrap Heap teams must fabricate the fastest drag boats in the history of the heap. Fingers crossed. Fast boats have been in the British blood since the first days of water speed records. From the 30s to the present day, three generations of the Campbell family have blazed a glorious trail for Great Britain, making the Bluebird the stuff of legend. This week, one of the Campbell clan will join us on the heap to pass her judgment. And to honour this fine record-breaking tradition, we've developed our own drag boat challenge and chosen two teams that live for speed. Our first set of drag demons are the Rally Renegades from up north. This team of mud-churning mentalists have tuned and tinkered their way to many a rally crown. Leading from the front is championship-winning rally driver Captain Kate, with Gwen and Jason doing the scavenging. Taking them on will be three high-octane honchos from the other side of the motorsport divide. The skids bodge and build fiercely fast racing cars to compete on the track. Oh, 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 oh. Their top tinkerer is Captain Tony. His able scavengers are Dave and Simon. OK, teams, your challenge today is to build beefed up boats capable of a truly rapid ride. And you have just 10 short hours to do it. Go on the sound of the gong. Wait for it, wait for it. No wheels on it. <laughs> Got these power, loads of power. A simple engine, preferably V8. Yeah. Yeah. Some kind of form of propulsion. Big prop. Yeah. A lot of grunt. Got the added problem that an engine will run a propeller backwards. You put one to a standard engine, the engine turns a propeller Ooh. wrong way. Good point. Sleek machine, a mean machine. <laughs> yeah. Get as fast as we can get it. Uh, Keep it simple. This challenge is far from simple, so we've brought in two aquatic aces to help out our teams. From the Lake District comes Ted Walsh four times British Formula 2 powerboat champion and Commodore of the Windermere Powerboat Club, don't you know? Drag boat today? Yeah. <laughs> I'm fairly keen on a hydroplane, on an outrigger hydroplane type design. Off the section, we will have some sponsons. What's a sponson? Sponson is the bit that sort of hangs on the side at the front and that will form most of the flotation when the boat is running. Right. We will use a fantastic piece of hydroplaning effect. The boat will be completely lifted clear of the level of the surface of the water. The boat will actually run on the front section of the sponsons here and whatever propeller we can possibly find or butcher. And if the propeller's turning the wrong way, then we just turn the engine around the other way and we drive it off the front as opposed to off the back. OK. The Renegades plan to build a three-point hydroplane drag boat. This lightweight construction consists of two sponsons, which provide the buoyancy for the boat to float. They will be attached to a centre section which will house an engine. This engine will drive a propeller and when the boat is up and running, the only points touching the water are the two sponsons and the propeller. The Renegades need to ensure they've got enough power to make the boat plane. If they can't do this, it'll be more tugboat than drag boat. What kind of motor do you want? Let's go big, baby. And we went big with our next expert, Simon Woodpower. Woody, to his mates, is big in stature and even bigger on knowledge. This water whiz spent his youth touring the world racing offshore powerboats before joining the design team for the record-breaking Virgin Atlantic Challenger. Morning, guys. Morning. I'm Simon. Hi, Simon. 
There's various ways to sort of skin the cat. I think we go for a single hull boat. Yeah. But what we want to try and do is to, with that single hull, get lots of air underneath it. So the boat will physically lift? Yeah. The boat will lift, yeah. We get enough power that the boat lifts up, yeah. Yeah. gets up on the plane and goes. Large prop. Big propeller, like an aeroplane. Propeller's really no, big. No, no, no. How are we going to drive the prop straight from there? Well, the... now we've got a few ideas there. Our secret is here, we're going to use a back axle from a car. But power is crucial, so we need a big engine. Bigger the better. That's the bigger the I'm better, saying. that's it. <laughs> the skids are going for a more conventional approach with a single hull boat. They'll generate extra speed by cleverly adding a step halfway along the bottom of the boat which will create a pocket of air upon which the boat will plane. The skid's design involves building the hull from scratch. This could prove to be very time consuming and the risk of leaks is high. So with their blueprints in place, it's time to sort their scrap lists. And we need a, a rear axle. Big, big engine. A disc brake assembly. Cool. Yes. Sleep. For a boat, we've got to have a propeller. Want some, like, box section, something like that? Yeah. OK, boys, so under a lot of pressure, get out there and find it. Cool. Come on. See you in a bit. Go for it. See you in a bit. Both teams have decided to build their drag boats from scratch, so parts are at a premium, and our scavengers will have to be at their sharpest. Out on the heap, our two teams are locked in a head-to-head -head scavenge showdown. Both teams are desperate to be first to the prime pieces of junk they'll use to build drag boats capable of tip-top straight-line speed. The rally renegades must have lost their pace notes and have started at a furious speed, grabbing everything in sight. I've got a bicycle with a headstock and everything. They'll need to be more selective if they want to build their super sleek, lightweight three-point hydroplane. Safety is obviously the number one priority for race car enthusiasts, the skids. Hello, Tony. I've found some life jackets. <laughs> Urged on by Captain Tony and expert Woody, the skid scavengers Dave and Simon will need to shift into gear if they're to find the parts needed to fabricate their super fast stepped mono hull. Rally renegade scavengers Gwen and Jason have made a high-octane start and are already heading back to base with some potential cladding for their multi-hulled speedster. At a pinch, not too bad. Might be something a bit better out there. OK. Next! Expert Ted is tough on his team, but it's not long before they come across some maritime junk. Oh, what is it? Yeah, Kate, you there? Yes, hello. Listen, we think we've found something pretty cool here. It's like the bottom off of an outboard. Well done. But it doesn't have a prop, so Ted's not interested. Ted's just shaking his head and saying no. Maybe it's a case of more haste, less speed for the boys in blue. There, it's all right. yeah. The skids have finally got off the starting grid and have stumbled across a motley selection of box section and tubing that they'll transform into the framework for their single hulled powerboat. <laughs> Wise Woody is making good use of the newly acquired scrap by sketching out his plan on the floor. Another dotted line there. And he's using a tape measure. That's not very scrappy. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Oh, this is really, this is a bit worryingly professional and exciting. Well, you've got to do your best. This is art. <laughs> this is presumably going to be some sort of floating type object. This is going to be the hull built upside down. So this right. is effectively the deck that we've marked oh, I see. out. Right. So we then build up from here uh, right. with these little sketches of the hull. So this isn't the bottom of the boat on the no, floor. No, this, this is the top, is of, the the top of the boat. Right. We then build up the frame, skin it with material. Wow. Turn it over and then put all the gubbins, all the gubbins in. in it. It's, it's quite a big boat. It's it's just about twenty feet right overall, and it's eight feet wide. So that it is basically looks like a big speedboat type. It's like one hull type speedboat. Single thing. hull speedboat, but what it's got, it's got a little step. It's yeah. so straightforward and oh, easy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way real boats are built. Is it? Is that how proper <laughs> boat builders do it? Yes, proper in inverted commas. <laughs> The step of the monohull acts as a vacuum, drawing in air from each side. This ventilates the bottom of the boat so that it rides on a cushion of air bubbles, reducing the friction and increasing the speed across the water. It's a great plan, but for the vacuum to work, the boat will need to be moving quickly. A puny outboard will make the monohull a step in the wrong direction. 
Tony, are you happy with your expert? Is he, oh, yeah, is he... he's done a good job. Yeah, yeah. I'm quite impressed. Because, I mean, your experience of boat building, I would imagine, is, is zero. Is slightly, <laughs> zero. Okay, yeah, it's it's going to be kind of... Only in my limited. bath. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll see you later on. All right. Cheers. All right. There's no laughing in the Renegades build area as Ted and Kate wait for Gwen and Jason to find the perfect pipes to build the framework for their mega quick multi hole. Concerned Captain Kate has gone on a mini scavenge of her own. But she needn't worry, her turbo teammates are on the job. Yeah, it's just empty air. We found like a load of aluminium tubing, which we think might do the job. Yeah, any tubing at all would be good. It's like an ambulance. Yeah. There you go. A hospital stretcher isn't usually a key component for boat builders. But for Ted, it's just what the doctor ordered. Look at that! That's a boat! Oh, yeah. I feel like I lie down. No pillows. <laughs> Kate, how's it all going? Hi. Slow. Now this looks to me like a hospital stretcher. Yeah, we think that's exactly what it is. Yeah. For sure. It's the best of British design, which makes it absolutely impossible to take to pieces. Now, what are you intending to do with the ex-hospital trolley? Yeah, we're building a frame and then covering it in uh, lightweight sheet aluminium. Is that ideal? Is that would be a, a, a kind of a happy scavenger? Oh, we can make do. I think we can get the job done. And worst case, you can always paddle it. <laughs> and Ted, what do you reckon to your team? Have you seen, seen them so far? No, look good. I just want them to come in more often, yes, bearing yeah. gifts. Well, it sounds like they might be on their way now. Yes, I think they are. If their scavenging is anything like their driving, we're in for one mucky and rapid ride. The driving force behind these madcap rally racers is championship winning driver Captain Kate. While she's sitting pretty, her charges get on with the dirty work. They look after my car. When I break it, they try and put it back together again because they're both very experienced drivers themselves. So they're able to give me lots of hints and tips on how to go faster and get the best out of the car. <laughs> she's ably assisted by bodger extraordinaire Jolly Jason. Jason should be very good at uh, get, getting out and scrounging the bits from the scrapyard. He's only very good at scrounging things. There's nothing more boring than the car running perfectly. While it's Gwen who provides the financial muscle. Gwen sold his house, so we used his money to buy the Subaru. We should, we should do OK as long as we can come up with some sort of a plan. They are completely mad, technically brilliant. I think we'll do very well. We are the Rally Renegades! OK, you there? Yeah, found a boat. There's a hole in it. Shall we bring it? Boat with a hole in it? What we'll sort of describe it? It's a canoe with a seat in it. <laughs> yeah, you can bring Probably. it. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> right, Captain. I could get to do me bits out of Pirates of the Caribbean, eh? Captain Kate thinks this canoe would make a super centre section for their hydroplane. It's about the right width, but it's too narrow at the front and the back. But Ted is not convinced. You're talking about making it stiff enough to make sure the prop shaft is not going to walk the whole thing around. Leaving the renegades all at sea. Right, I don't care. Well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't matter whether we're well on or... On the other hand, Kentish boy racers the skids are rocketing around the heat to find a motor to power their single-hulled speedster. Uh, they've got a V8 engine. Cool, OK, so I'll come straight over on the quarter. It's fairly complete. Skids, you all right in there? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit... It's, oh, <laughs> it's a bit tight in there. A bit cosy. What have you got behind that spaghetti mess of, of scrap in there? We've found a very large American V8 engine. Is it going to be quite heavy? Yeah. I think the more problem is going to be moving this stuff to get that out. But it's going to be worth it, though, we hope. It will. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get it out. Yeah. You're just going to tie a load of rope around it and just pull? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's going to be the option. Brute force. Yeah, yeah definitely. I look forward to having a closer look at that engine, because it looks... Right meaty. Excellent. All right, Skids. We'll, we'll see you later. See you Thank later. you. Cheers. And meaty engines are what these Skids like best. <laughs> these three circuit speedsters like to spend their days building roaring race cars and their weekends racing them. They're captained by Tony, the elder statesman of the team. Tony is the captain of our team because he, um, right, he obviously has age on his side. And brains, allegedly. Tony, extremely clever. Um, never, never seen not managed to build anything yet. 
With youth and comedy on his side, it's Dave. <laughs> Dave is a funny guy, keeps us all laughing. And the last in this crew of hit personas is General Dog's body, <laughs> Simon T. Simon will turn his hand to anything. Bodging, <laughs> carrying, make yeah. sure the wheels are on and we're going to stay on. <laughs> it's, it's <a> busy, <laughs> that helps. <Yeah. laughs> Bring it on. We, we are, are the skids and we're, we're going to leave, leave our mark. mark. Well, that would pull over. The skids need a little help to excavate their hulking half-ton engine, so Captain Tony races out from the pits. I think that should have enough power for what we require. Let's get going. There you go, that's a V8 for you. Well, it's a beauty, isn't it? The skids always wanted a pokey power source, but could this mega motor sink their chances? <laughs> I think we need a bigger boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done, guys. We need to crack on. Yeah, yeah let's well, we'll go. Get this let's... Out. As Woody cracks the whip, the renegade scavengers, Wayne and Jason, are still hunting for their horsepower. Still looking for an engine. Jay, if you come over to near the bridge, I think we've found something. Oh, beauty. V6. Does me this. OK, we think we've found the donkey. We've got a V6 here. Well, we'll settle for what we can get, but a V8 would be better. Morning, gentlemen. Hey. Ah, oh, now you've found a classic vehicle here in mint condition. V6. Do you think that, there, that is an engine? Well, there's a bit work. of power in the battery, because the... Hazard light works for them. Before we drag it out, just to see if it at least turns <laughs> over. Come on! <laughs> Get in there! <laughs> I don't believe that. But what, and what sort of size engine? Uh, it's a two and a half or a three litre. Looks more like a three litre. Could be a three and a half by the time we finish. <laughs> I'll see you later on, guys. <laughs> Rob's off to meet a very special scrap guest, leaving the rugged renegades fighting to free their clapped out chassis. Keeping it in the family, this week's judge is none other than Gina Campbell, daughter of Donald and a world record holder on water in her own right. Perfect for our speed challenge. Great honour to have you on the show. Thank you very Thank much for joining us. Thank you. It's um, quite an exciting one for us, because there is the potential that we might make something that actually goes relatively fast, which we've... Yes. <laughs> I've got the feeling they're, they're very excited, both teams, aren't they? And they, they look like they, they know what they're doing. Well, you've got two very interesting experts there, and they've both got totally different concepts, and it's very interesting to see, because you've got Simon, who's with the skids, it's... and he's very methodical, and he's laid it all out, yeah. and, and you've got Ted with the renegades, who's... Bolt it all together, yeah. slap an engine in, <laughs> give happens. it some welly, <laughs> and, and it'll go. But the two actual designs are quite different. I mean, one is yeah. what I would th traditionally think of as a boat type thing. I mean, a hull. A monohull. Um, very good in rougher water. Right. And I think Simon has the easier job of building his yeah. because he's only got a one piece construction. Whereas Ted and the Renegades, they've got a much more complex machine. It's got to get up on its three points, yeah. the hydroplane, and it's got to technically fly but stay attached to the water. Right. And when I raced a hydroplane, it was dependent on how the air flowed over the top of the hull, right. where you had your speed from and your stability. And just give us an idea of what sort of speeds you achieved. 186 miles an hour. <laughs> Safety, of course, is paramount, yeah. but they're going to have a lot of fun doing it. Yes. And if I have to, at this stage, say who I favour, because I like speed, I'm going to go with the Rally Renegades at this stage. Right. Well, just keep the little door you open. You can change it's, your mind at any time. It's a woman's prerogative. Absolutely. <laughs> a scavenger's prerogative is to keep scouring the heap and the skid's metallic magpies have spied a back axle that'll transfer the power from their mega motor to a propeller. Oh, brilliant. Dave, the back axle. Well done, mate. Here's the axle. That's um, just what we need. A oh, a bit more weight, but... A little on the heavy side, but Tony's pleased to have an axle back in his pit area. Uh, Simon just cut it off a, a chassis out there. The skid's unique gearing system comprises of the back axle of a car and a disc brake arrangement. By welding the disc brake to the differential of the axle, they can control the power to the propeller. When the disc is unclamped, the diff will spin freely, but the prop won't spin. As the disc is gradually clamped, this reverts the power through to the prop, providing a continuously variable gear ratio, effectively an automatic gearbox. This cleverly allows the skids to progressively add power to the prop, giving much better acceleration. That sounds great in theory, but when modifying this mangled back axle, they need to ensure the prop 
will rotate in the right direction. As soon as you start opening the power up, the, f the load on the prop will just spin the top. You rotate, rotate that end clockwise. Now it's trying to turn this. After much deliberation, Tony confirms that axle and prop that, are accurately yeah, matched. Right, that That's perfect, isn't it? That's it. Next door, things are far from perfect. The Rally Renegades have stripped the stretcher that will form the centre section for their ambitious three-point hydroplane drag boat. But with minimal scrap scavenged, they've hit the bodger's brick wall. Right. It took us ages to... Yeah, I know, but there's nothing yeah. else to do, is there? Because there's no there engine, I can't... Well, there will be. Realising their team's troubles, scavengers Gwen and Jason are wrestling with their weighty V6 and will have it free and back to the build area in no time. Just shout if there's anything you want. We're busy doing frame stuff in there, but if there's anything you need, yell. You know, we're still quite a long way short of our sort of materials requirement list, aren't we? Ted is keen to get building their boat so it's back on the trash trail for Gwen and Jason as they go on a quest for buoyancy. Ah, don't need the radio, there's a barrel. Spot on. Yeah. That'll do. Yeah, Kate, you're there. Well, we found a barrel which we think might be useful for the uh, buoyancy, buoyancy bits on the front. Excellent, that's brilliant. OK, we'll bring it back. The renegades have found the buoyancy they need for their boat to float and Ted has torn himself away from his tubing to inspect the barrels. The, the two of them, that's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. So th those would be like the two out. Well, we've got a choice, really. We can build a frame round it with some of our quality tubing. Yeah. Unless you can find me another stretcher just like that. Which oh, not another stretcher. He's obsessed. Box. I like stretchers. He's got a thing about While Ted is preoccupied with his pipes, the skids are racing ahead in their battle to build the best marine machine. Because what we'll do is we'll weld them on the back of this one. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then we'll plate inside. Look at that. The shape's taking shape. So the early build honours in our drag boat challenge go to the skids. Our two teams of motor racing enthusiasts are building drag boats to race in the fastest water sprint the heap has ever seen. The Rally Renegades have hatched an ambitious plan to build a three-point hydroplane. Their opponents are circuit racing nuts, the skids. They've opted for a stepped mono hull that will allow them to tear across the water on a cushion of air bubbles. In the skids build area, it's all hands on deck. Expert Woody welds the fabricated framework for their hull and Captain Tony tinkers with their mega motor, while scavengers Dave and Simon are out on the heap, searching for a vital component for their stepped mono hull. Bingo! Here's our prop. Excellent. Yeah. Still need more tubers. Any good? That is a long shot. Let's keep it and... Uh... That will stir the water, that one. It'll stir the water <laughs> or the okay. coffee. Woody thinks that oversized prop will be as effective as a swizzle stick, so it's back out on the heap for Dave. Are you 58? The Rally Renegades have most of the components needed to build their three-point hydroplane drag boat. But that's all they are, components. See that? That's a boat, that is. Yeah. Well, do you want to carry on with that thingy? Realising that time's against them, motor nuts Gwen and Jason are doing what they do best, getting down and dirty to free their engine. Undo the belt on the starter, which is that one. Kate's gone on a rust recce and dragged in a junkyard gem. Fantastic! Expert Ted's taken a shine to this lightweight helicopter skid, a perfect beam to join the barrels that will get their hydroplane up on its points. I want that beam carry all of the load. Yeah. Next, I'm going to sort of chop those up a little bit and weld them on to the sides. Are those the bits to go across the bottom? That will support the bottom of the barrel, but we can leave it until we've got the critical height. Time is beginning to run out for the Renegades, but Ted's plans are still changing by the minute, and Kate's finding it hard to grasp his unconventional approach. Luckily, Gwen and Jason offer a welcome distraction as they finally extricate their engine. Oh, well done. Good job. A good job it might be, but in the boating world, an engine without a prop is like a pencil without lead. Pointless. The slick skids have undertaken a weldathon as they knock together their huge hull. But the strain is telling on the senior staff. I could do a two minutes off. Two minutes off welding. Don't have a rest. <laughs> what am I oh, saying? That's some contemplation time. <laughs> 
There's no thinking time needed for the young guns of this pit crew. Like their rally renegade counterparts, Dave and Si are on the hunt for the perfect prop. Let's have a look in them cupboards, Dave. Make sure there's not a prop in there. Boys. Wow, wow. Top, well, that's man. nice top, and brilliant. Top, Just did you love. What do you reckon to that? What a baby. Bit bent, Couple but of I'm dings, sorry, but nothing a big hammer won't sort. Super. Cheers. Thank you. Woody is pleased with the prop as he feels it's perfect for their high performance boat. The propeller is the only way of getting available horsepower from an engine to the water. However, every propeller is designed to work with a specific sized engine. A propeller is rated by its pitch, which is the distance it moves forward in one revolution. A high-pitched prop is the quickest, but must be matched with a powerful engine. If you match a prop with the wrong motor, it'll not work efficiently and can do serious harm to your engine. So, Tony, got a very good-looking hull going on here. Yeah. What we, I mean, this looks like a rather nice prop. Is this exactly what you want? This is what we want, apparently, from our expert, and this is <laughs> what... Only, only is apparently. <laughs> yeah. That's a big old engine. Uh, yeah, well, that's the name of the game, power, propellers. Fast, I like it. <laughs> As I understand, the, the prop took a bit of finding. Yes, yes, we couldn't find one. We, we, we did find another one, but it wasn't suitable. So, you know, it's got to be right if we're doing a good job of the boat. Absolutely. We need the right power. So if you've got everything you need... You yep, the last... Uh, it's going to be tough the second half, but, you know, that's what it's all about. Yeah. We'll get there, and yeah. it should be good fun. You've got a smile on your face. That's yeah, what I like that's to see. <laughs> but I'll leave you to get on with it then, Tony, and Cheers. I shall see you later on. Thank you. <sighs> Tell you what, beautiful fabrication on that boat. But that engine weighs a ton. I feel like sticking a hippo in the back of it. I think. And Gina, the teams are all busy, so we'll just leave them to it. Because it's right. just such a great opportunity to talk to you about your, the, you know, your heritage, your family's heritage, and the fact that you really, the, you know, your family is connected with high-speed travel across water more than anybody else in well, the world. <laughs> well, Robert, they established themselves, you know, way back in the 1920s. My grandfather, and then up to my father. Teamwork, it may be. But it's the skipper, Campbell himself, who takes the terrifying risk. This time, Bluebird went like a dream. Speed for this run, 243 miles an hour. He did this speed test in this, in, on Coniston Lake in... in he in did. And what speeds did, did it achieve? What, was it, what were the records it set? Um, the final record it set was 276 miles an hour in 1964. Wow. But when she crashed in 1967, she was recorded doing over 300 miles an hour. Wow. Which was my father's dream. He thought if he could get it over 300, he'd be able to keep it for virtually well, eternity. Yes, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> now, Gina, I know that you've been at very high speed on water, but in some ways you, you might imagine that you, it would be the last thing you'd want to do after what had happened to your father. Wow. Well, us Campbells, we do crazy things. The rally renegades are still scavenging at a time of day when they should be busy building. Time is very short, but has Jason finally hit the jackpot? Okay, we've, uh, we've found a propeller. Fantastic, what does it look like? Uh, big and silver and shiny. At least it looks good. How many blades? How many blades? Just the two. Just two. Two blades. Two blades. That'll do. 14 inches, 24. Lovely. That is perfect. Aha! <laughs> Any good? Nearly always, like, the older stainless props them out of a crack in it, so they might have to weld it up or something like that. He's not very grateful, is he? It's a scrap heap. What do you expect? Expert Ted is not easily pleased and now wants a shaft that is a precise fit for his prop. That a pinch, but if you could find a splice shaft. OK. You're looking for, like, old marine outboard gearboxes, um, any big outboard stuff. Let's go and have a look. Jason knows right. exactly where to find one. It's the over-the-hill outboard that Ted rejected earlier. Cool. Take it back. Dude. Ted! Now that is Does just this make you happy, man. That is from heaven, I tell you. The outboard certainly floats Ted's boat, but the renegades will need to get a move on if their boat is going to float. Okay. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's good to see you very busy because there's not a huge amount of sort of ship like yes do you like my boat yes it's wonderful <laughs> i suppose the rest of it is the floaty bit that's rather important for everything yeah but the um flotation is going to come from our big blue plastic barrels so the right. the, the bit in the middle 
Oh, isn't, isn't on its even own, apparently float. wouldn't float. Right. But, but so Ted thinks that's okay. Ted's ideas are all right? Um, as far as we can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do but we know? I, I, said, I said in the plural, ideas, as in he doesn't got one, he seems to have quite a few. Look at that, made to measure. Next door, the speedy skids are laps ahead and their single hull is taking shape. I'll go and weld, do some welding around the back yeah. where we folded no it. No problem. Yeah? That's it, carry on. Woody is adding some final welds before they flip their framework. Oh, it weighs nothing. This has got to be one of the finest fabrication jobs in heap history. Hey, does it need sides? <laughs> the skids, they drew it on the floor and it was a bit like, you know, cutting a, a pattern to make a nice dress. Yeah. But it's beautiful. Are they on the right programme? Yeah, is this really scrap heap? You know, and then they've got, they've got their engine, which they've got a lovely propeller, they're all really happy. Unlike the Renegades, who are going fine. They've got all the components they need. In fact, they've got all the components about 15 boats need. <laughs> they've got an engine hanging from a bit of rope now, which is good, that's good. Yes. They've got a really good propeller and they've got a really simple drive shaft goes straight from the engine. Yes. But there's that, none of that's joined together. There was just a canoe with a barrel in yeah. this. And they're not using the canoe anyway. Oh. <laughs> no, because that looks like a boat. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to me that the expert came into the skids with a plan, the skids agreed yeah. and they built it and that's why they made such good progress. Yeah. Whereas I'm not sure the same could be said no. of the Renegade. Like they, I think Ted is a creative artistic expert and he can change his mind yeah. four or five times a second. I think, I think that's Kate's problem. She goes, oh, that was a good idea. The one, the, I know the idea you had 18 ideas before, that, that was good. She kind of, she's lagging. It might be one of those ones where you suddenly see, they start to join five things together and you go, oh, oh, I see. Oh, right. <laughs> so if we reposition the leg onto the skid. Ted has certainly stepped up a gear as he talks his team through the next stage of their build. Stubs will then weld a section across the front and then build essentially a steep bow section. Is this the moment where expert and team begin working as one well oiled unit? On the Hang on a minute, I'm lost here. No. No. So we haven't done the sponson bits then? No, the, the sponsons are the, the, the barrels are the sponsons. No. Okay. I know it's a difficult one. Are you sort of visualising it? Yeah. Roughly. Roughly is not good enough for Kate as she grinds her axe in confession cam. Ted just seems to be so laid back that nothing phases him. It's taken ages to assemble all the materials. Now we are quite behind with the build. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure what, you know, what he thinks we're going to be able to achieve in the next three hours. <laughs> it has to come together, so there is no two ways about it. We'll, we're just going to have to get it finished. Um, it may not be very pretty, but it'll be done. Even an ugly drag boat may be beyond the renegades if they don't get a wriggle on. And Kate kickstarts their construction by fabricating the framework for the centre section of their hydroplane. Meanwhile, Wayne and Jason are sorting the sponsons, and Ted's doctoring the drive shaft. But is it too little, too late? How good's that? That's the business. That is poetry in motion. As the sun sets on this heap of dreams, there's a very different atmosphere in the skids build area. They're sweeping through their construction chicanes as the boys in green work in perfect harmony. Tony's off to confession cam to give the lowdown on expert Woody. Very happy, yeah. He obviously knows his stuff. He's um, been very informative, uh, easy to get on with. And um, I think we seem to have broken the back of the hard bits, but it's, it's the last bits. Physically getting the boat running and finished is, is going to be quite hard, but, you know, we should do it. We'll press on, the lads are pushing hard, and we'll see what we can do. After minor modifications, the motor is ready to be mounted. Insert the brain, Igor. Marrying the motor to the back axle is crucial, as any misalignment will be catastrophic to their drag boat's drive system. Right. Just need to go down onto that keel tube. And then weld it to that. And to weld that. it to the galve tube, yeah. But expert Woody is across it. The skids are really making their mark with an impressive display of tinkering teamwork. Uh, teams, you have two hours two remaining. Hours? Two hours? Two hours construction oh. time remaining, teams. Better Thank get you. on with it then. Two hours. <laughs> two hours. Oh, That's one to finish the boat off yeah. and one to have a cup of tea. See, yeah. Job done. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> um, it's far from job yeah, done for the that. Renegades. They have a mountain of metal to climb and Ted needs to calculate the right angle for their hydroplane's drive shaft. So it's off to the whiteboard for some number crunching and to speed things up, Kate has offered to help. 
Do we need to all take our shoes and socks off? Um, it's a bit beyond that. It's sort of long, divisible half fractions. While Ted struggles with the angles, Gwen and Jason are getting on with attaching the drive shaft. Well, this through to that pulley. Bob's your uncle because. And Kate's making good headway with the centre section, but have they left themselves with too much to do? The problem for, with, the, with the Renegades is that it's the communication between the expert and the team. The team yes. seem to be, they really need to know what they're doing and they seem to be lagging a little bit. If they know all about land-based machines, this is a whole new concept yeah. for them all. Simon's boat, though, I think, I mean, he's, he's looking at sort of it speeds in excess of 70 miles an hour. To have something on scrappy go that fast, on water. But he's got a big engine in there, Quite 290 fast. horsepower or something. So. Right. We'll wait and see, won't yeah. we? And do you think, also, at the end of today, we're going to have two boats that will work? I'm sure you will. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope Gina's confidence isn't misplaced, as it's going to be the tightest of races to the chequered flag for the Renegades. The skids are on the home straight and have dragged in a filing cabinet to scavenge some last bits of sheet metal for their mono hull. Oh, that is it. You've been going really well, though, all day. Yeah. An amazing job seeing you do that, but it does. time is pressing now. And you've time got, is pressing. Because you've got the engine sort of roughly in position, but have yeah. you got control systems? We've got a few sort of basic ideas for the controls. So. Right. Yeah. They're going to be fairly rudimentary, then, yes. sort of on, off and steer That's a bit. That's it, yes. Right. <laughs> Lots of throttle or no throttle. <laughs> we'll be a happy team. That'll be very special. You better get back in there and get to work then. Excellent. Right, Thank see you. See you later on. Yeah. Captain Tony is steering his team in the right direction as he bangs out a rusty rudder. The last job of the day. <laughs> now it's all eyes on the ragged renegades who are bodging their way to the finish. We're going just forward this Jason's thing, yeah? finally found a use for the canoe. He's chopping it up to form a driver's monocoque, but time is not on his side. And the renegades must bolster the buoyancy barrels to their drag boat if they're going to be ready to race tomorrow. Was this what you had in mind? Well, broadly. Yeah. Your ten hours are up. Oh. Rest you well, because soon you will be racing your mean machines in the great scrap heap sprint. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, teams. Tomorrow is your D's date. What a day, destiny. eh? Yeah. Well done, team. Can't wait to see you go. Well done. Woo. The teams have weathered a tough build, and an awesome aquatic challenge awaits. Will the skids speed to victory in their super sleek stepped monohull? Or will the rally renegades leave them in their wake with their barrel ballasted three point hydroplane? Each team will get just one chance to reach their maximum straight line speed and clock the quickest time over our 300 meter sprint course. So, speed is the name of the game. Simple. Before our teams take to the water, we've allowed them an hour of tinkering time. After a relatively stress-free build, the skids are in high spirits, but there is still some serious work to be done. It's essential that the prop shaft is perfectly aligned. Any aberrations will result in massive vibration that could shake their drive system to pieces. Expert Woody's spotted a slight imperfection, and in true scrap heap style, it's out with a gas axe as the lads temper the shaft until it's straight. Oh, I reckon you're there. I get ready to quench it. It's an altogether more worrying scenario for the Rally Renegades. With just minutes before the start of our aquatic sprint, yeah. the Renegades seem unsure as to whether their boat will actually float. Slow down as possible. There. Yep. So I want to fill all that area with as much of that stuff as we've got. Yep, OK. Right. Hoping that they do manage to keep their heads above water, the Renegades are attaching the barge boards that will help their flotation tanks get up on the plane. It all looks a bit desperate, but does Judge Gina still think the Renegades can race to victory? But you're very keen on a three-pointed... A three-pointed hy hydroplane. Hydroplane. And um, I've kept my loyalty with them. I'm a loyal person. I'm a Virgo. Very We're loyal. very loyal. Very, very loyal. Even though they've been through some very, they very tricky, through. tricky patches. I think tinkering time today has been very busy. Very busy they, they indeed. They just painting a few colours on it, whether they really weren't but working hard. if it goes, it will go. Right. The only thing we haven't done is we haven't christened her. 
I know. I, yes, they, they should have done that. They've, neither of them yeah. have got names as far as I know. Yeah, they were talking about, do we have any champagne? Then someone said perhaps some cider might be more apt. <laughs> the rules for this challenge couldn't be straighter. Race along our aquatic drag strip in the quickest possible time and you're the winner. With Gina, our judge, predicting speeds of up to 70 miles an hour, a firm hand on the rudder will be essential to win this speed fest. Any deviation will result in wasted time. The renegades will take to the water first, and in the interest of safety, our experts will pilot the craft. So, Ted, this is it, the moment of truth. You're going to find out if your drag boat really works. Then what is your main concern? I think the biggest problem we've got is that the... Uh as we start the engine, it will push the front of the boat under the water. And um, that's, that's a pretty tricky thing to get over. Yeah, and then you will be heading for the bottom of the lake. That's heading for Neptune. <laughs> well, we want to drag boats and not submarines. Let's hope that's what we get. Good luck, Ted. Go on, Thank go and much. jump we'll in. See you in a little while. Good luck. Yeah. Go yeah. for it, Ted. With a top speed of 70 miles an hour predicted, Ted has plenty to think about. He does look slightly nervous, doesn't he? Wouldn't you? <laughs> It does look incredibly low in the water. It's getting lower. <laughs> I really think, unless we start this race quite soon, then he's going to be down. I think time is of the essence here. Yeah, it's he... all right though, we haven't known him long. Yeah, we haven't. <laughs> not, not be a great loss. <laughs> Ted has fired up his V6 and approaches the start line. Rally Renegades, the tide has turned, the wind is at your back. Go on the sound of the horn! It is, it's moving, it's moving! Keep going, keep going! It sounds promising, doesn't it? I don't think we're going to see aquaplaning, but we may... Ooh. Oh! oh. <laughs> Come on! Ted stalled briefly, but he's got the engine started again. Come on, little engine. Well, big engine that's not doing very much. So now it'll be full throttle to the finish and the predicted breathtaking speeds. Well, not just yet. It's very, very low. In, in fact, the back is now fully submerged. Isn't it? Yeah. it was above the water before. It's very, very low in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, here we go. Uh, maybe not. One last splattering dash to make it to the finish. I expect the radar, radar gun hasn't been pushed off its limit. No, no. Not no. today. <laughs> Indeed, far from registering 70, our radar gun confirms Ted didn't even reach 7 mph. His top speed was 4 miles per hour. Hello, Ted, have you crossed the finish line? Yeah, yeah, we're hey! Hey! Well done, well done. <laughs> oh, that's really, you've got a time. Really? <laughs> well, I mean, he made, he made the course on the thing. They could still win. Well, he's done the course under his own steam. So yes. if, the other, if, if the skids don't even make it down the course, he's won. The slowest time ever <laughs> for a drag boat. The Renegades completed the course under their own steam. Well, there was plenty of it anyway. Their time was a very, very long three minutes and 40 seconds. Not breaking any of Bluebird's records, but having crossed the finish line, they could still win. It's unlikely. Or is it? So the skids must cover the 300-metre course in under three minutes and 40 seconds. So, Simon, this is it. Moment of truth. Do you have any concerns? I mean, what are you being worried? The worst-case scenario is it might roll, maybe. I don't know. Could be exciting. Very best of luck. I hope you get to the other end in a great time. Thank you. Go on, Simon. Go and check it out. If Woody falls from his boat and hits the water at the speed he's expected to reach, the effect will be similar to landing on concrete. And he may have more immediate concerns. Fabricating a hull from scratch meant that leaks were always a possibility, and the skid's worst nightmare has come true. Cheers, guys. Yeah, well, go, nice. mate. Come on. But it'll take more than a drop of water to dampen the skid spirit. OK, skids, with the amount of water in your boat, you obviously haven't got long. 
go as fast as you can on the sound of a horn. Come on! Come on! Come Keep on! Going. Come on! Go on, burst into life. Go on. Come on! Go on. all that potential power then, and none of it's being used, is it? So annoying. That giant V8 is certainly spluttering, and there appears to be a problem getting fuel to the engine. He's got to pump it by hand, you see. No. Yeah. He's pumping the fuel He's by hand. He's pumping the fuel by hand. The momentum and the, and the wind is going to get him over the line. Yeah. And they decided to mm -hmm. take it back down. To take British Rail on the side. <laughs> With Woody having to pump fuel by hand, the skid's progress is more canal boat cruising than powerboat racing, but at least Woody's still on the move. Go on, boys, this way really <laughs> Go, skids! I think we're getting quite excited. As Woody charges, well, drifts towards the finish line, the tension is too much to bear. <laughs> I can't look! <laughs> Tell me what's going on! <laughs> The skids are ecstatic, but have they beaten the renegade's time? Despite their fuel pump failure, the skids drag boat tore through the 300 metres in just three minutes, reaching an incredible top speed of six miles per hour. Well, teams, considering that at the start of the day we were concerned about maybe hitting 70 miles an hour, possibly rolling the craft, yeah, the, those dangers weren't really realised. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not allowed to have two sets of losers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Although, Although we were very close today. <laughs> very, very close, close to it. <laughs> but there has to be a team that comes second. And this week, the team that comes second are the Rally Renegades. But well done! Well done. Well done. It's the fastest well done, boat we've team. ever built, I'll tell you. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I was worried that I was going to get whiplash from watching it go past but I'm, I'm fine, and, and the winners this week, the fantastically resilient skids. Well done, guys. Well done, skids. <laughs> crack it open. Yeah. It's the I'll least you can do at the end of the day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yes, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the downside. <laughs> what a day. But join us again next week when we'll have even more mechanical mayhem. <laughs> Our two teams are going fishing. Car fishing as they attempt to reel in three floating minis.